welcome to this UML tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about use cases. So what are use cases? Well in UML there are two types of diagram uh, when it comes to UML modeling. There are the behavioral models which focus on the functionality of a system or what the system does and there are the structure models who focus on how the system does it, or in other words, the technical details. A use case is a behavioral model, and the purpose of a use case is to capture the functionality of a system from a user point of view. So typically a use case diagram you would draw if you were to go to a customer and you have to develop a software for the customer. You would typically go down there as a first step and ask the customer, so what is it that you, you want this system to do? So the customer might tell you something like, um, I want my system to handle orders and we want to send out a quotation and we need to manage our account, customer account details. We must handle payments and things like that. So those are typically very uh, functional things that a system needs to do and they are very clearly described from a user point of view. The customer is really not that concerned with what happens internally in a system. So typically, after such a meeting, you would draw a use case diagram. So a use case consists out of multiple use case diagram consists out of multiple use cases. And each use case represents the smallest unit of functionality. So typically if you have a feature that the system needs to do, if you cannot break that feature down into smaller features anymore, then you're pretty much on the right level. So yeah, it, it's typically a, a use case is typically some a, a function functionality of a system as seen from the user point of view. So if we are going to draw a use case diagram, we need to know what each symbol in the use case diagram means. So typically uh, the most one of the uh, symbols would be the actor symbol, uh, drawn as a stick man. So the actor is a user who interacts with the features of the system. Uh, could be a customer, could be a manager, yeah, but whenever you define an actor, you do not define it as an individual, but as a role. For example, you may have a manager named Fred who's interacting with the system, but uh, you don't name the actor Fred. Why? Because Fred can be replaced and the other manager can take his place. What is more important that you state the actor is the manager because the manager interacts with the system regardless of who it is. Then there is the most important symbol, the use case drawn as a circle. So a use case represents a feature of the system which is formulated as a goal that needs to be accomplished by the system. For example, as shown here, book flight. Then there is the association, which is simply a plain line. The association defines relationships between elements, typically between the actor and the use case, for example, uh, to indicate there is an interaction going on between the two. There are some further refinements of relationships. The include, extent, and the generalization. So the include relationship is used to indicate that one use case depends on the other. In the example I'll be using later, uh, a user needs to log in before they can order food. So in order food has a include relationship with login. Why? Because login has to happen first. The extend relationship can be used in two situations, either when one use case is optional or if one use case is a specific version of another case. Uh, later I will be demonstrating that based on a payment example. I mean, you can make payment for a meal, but there are two ways to do it. You can either do it via credit card or PayPal. So credit card, card payment and pay PayPal payment are essentially two refinements of making payment, and thus the extent relationship. Lastly, there's a generalization, and very simply put, you draw a generalization between two elements if one is a more generic version of the other, uh, which I will later demonstrate in an example. Okay, so what am I going to do in this video? I'm going to draw a use case diagram in Eclipse. Uh, and Eclipse has the Papyrus plugin installed in order to draw UML models. And I'm going to do that based on the following scenario. A customer is able to order meals online. They need to log in with their account in a web application. After logging in, they can order the meal. Payment can be made by credit card and PayPal, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, so without further ado, let's, uh, let me just keep this slide open so I can peek. Let's go into Eclipse. 
So this is Eclipse Luna with the uh, Papyrus plugin installed. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a Papyrus plugin, a Papyrus project, which I'm going to name a use case example. And I'm going to draw this uh, diagram in UML naturally. And I want to draw a use case diagram which I will name even though I think it doesn't really matter food order system there we go yes yeah, still despite me keying that in it is actually still called model at this point so what I'd like to do is rename the model so I'm gonna name it food order system okay okay there we go, so now the model is nicely renamed. Alright, and now I can start drawing. Basically I don't need to do any other settings in my project because given that a use case diagram is a behavioral model and therefore uh, platform independent because it simply talks about what a system does regardless on how it's done, I don't need to import any Java settings or anything like the technical models, so I can simply use the symbols here to draw my use case diagram. Okay, so the first symbol I like to draw is a package and I'm going to do use this package to symbolize the system. There we go. Then naturally I need an actor who does the interacting with the system. So in this case I'm going to name the actor no, not user customer. There we go. So now I can actually draw what this customer can do. So what can he do? Well, they need to log in with their account in a web application. So let's draw a use case. So, okay, login account. So login account is a very typical uh, name for a use case because it's one single goal. It cannot be further defined and it's pretty much written from the user point of view because the user indeed logs in his account. Again, I am not so much concerned about what the system does, especially at this point. Simply the user can log in and that's enough for me at it right now. The other thing the user can do is order a meal. Okay, so that's another use case. Order meal. There we go. And what else? Um, payment can be made by credit card or PayPal. So first I will draw a use case. Make payment, which is something that the user will do. And then I will draw the two specific cases, so make credit card payment. There we go, let me just shift it nicely in the borders. That's that. And draw the other use case, make PayPal payment. There we go. Okay, how you want to draw your use case diagram and what sequence is really up to you. But as you can see, I have a preference to simply drawing the use cases first and then start fussing about the relationships. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw an association between the customer and every use case he's interacting with. So, okay, the customer logs in the account. So click on customer, click on login account. Then a description will appear, a customer login account, okay, makes perfect sense, so I know that I'm on the right track. Then click on customer again, click on order meal, so a customer order a meal, also makes sense. Then lastly the customer can make a payment, so a customer make payment. I mean, as you can see, these descriptions actually make sense from a language point of view. So even though it's not foolproof, it is one way you can use to validate that you're on the right track. So, what else have we do? Well, I mentioned that login is compulsory before a meal can be ordered. So, in that case, I need to draw a include relationship. So, order meal includes login account, meaning login account has to happen first. And like I said just now as well, the credit card payment and the PayPal payment are specific versions of making payment. Thus, we can use an extends relationship here. So where the include is pointing towards the compulsory one, the extends will point towards the more general case. 
So make credit card payment is an extension of making payment. And making PayPal payment is an extension of making payment as well. So there we go. Lastly, what I want to show is the generalization. So say if I have multiple types of users right, for this system. So just now I drew a customer. But for example, a manager may need to log in as well. Uh, so let's draw the manager. Well, a manager and a customer have nothing really to do with each other, except for the fact that they are both users of the system. So, well, typically I would, if there is a manager involved, he would also have use cases to relate to. But for this example, I'm going to omit that. I'm drawing him to show that a manager and a customer are both users. So let's draw a more generic type of actor, which is user. So since, like I said, the customer and manager are both user, even though different roles, I will draw a generalization between them. And with generalizations, the arrow is always pointing towards the more generic case. So there you go. Customer and manager inherit or user is a generalization of customer and manager. So there you have it. There you have use case diagrams in a nutshell. I hope this tutorial was useful for you. And if it was, see you next time. Mm -hmm.